Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video. So today we are actually going to be making the sun a red dwarf style. So I got this comment recently I thought hmm, this could be interesting. It like, will affect the planets in a very peculiar way. So I want to see how this goes. But first of all, guys, wow. The channel's increasing in size massively right now. So many, many thanks to everyone who subscribed, left a comment and leave a like or whatever. So that's all good stuff. So hopefully we can continue on the journey to 500 because I really, really think we're going to do it. No problem. So enough of that. Let's get into this. So hopefully everyone's having a good day, of course, but let's get into this. So making the sun a red dwarf. Eh? Okay, interesting. All right. So what we're going to want to do here is I think I'm going to compare it to... um. Proxima here, so we're gonna have it the same. Oh, actually, no, 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 we actually don't need to do that. Actually, so we can't turn this sun into a red dwarf because its mass is too high. Like, I don't think anything of this mass would be a red dwarf. So, what we want to do is here we want to make it 0 0.5 masses of sun. So, as you can see, it cooled down there, but we want to decrease it even more. So, let's do 0.25. Would that work? So, if we just get um. Where is it? Let's get Proxima in here so we can just compare how hot they are in temperatures. So let's put it all the way out here so it doesn't affect anything. Okay, so Proxima, its temperature is 3342. But if we look at the sun, the sun is 37. So we want to decrease this a little more so it gets to about 33. So let's do it a little calm decrease. Okay, so now the sun is a properly a red dwarf. So we can delete that other one. Oh my god, it looks so small. Okay, so let's delete that. And if we look right here, and we get a comparison of all the planets, we can see the Sun is only a little bit bigger than Jupiter is now. So, very interesting stuff. So we've got Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Planet 9, all of the inner planets, all of the dwarf planets for the comparison there. So, oh, we don't want to go to Planet 9. Yes, yeah, so stay at Venus. Okay, so, let's slow down time to about a few minutes a second. Then we go to we want to go to Earth here, because Earth's going to probably have the most climate changes. So, currently, Earth is 37 or 30 degrees. Wow, it's got darker here already. Look how more of like a darker tint Earth has to it. Because if, if it was normal, Earth would have more of a... Um, ah, damn it, we can't really see it. <laughs> but can we... Oh, I think we can try this. So you can see, if you can just about briefly see there, the Earth has a, a lot... It's a lot more blue when you have a yellow or a yellow star like this. But I know it doesn't look yellow, but it's classed as a yellow dwarf. But anyways... <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, it had more of a blue tint, but now we've got a red dwarf. I don't know if you can spot it, but it looks slightly darker overall. So, let's go on the, um, let's go land in, yeah, Canada here. Or, yeah, pretty much north of Canada, and let's have a little look at the sun. So, as we can see, the sun is very, very small compared to what it used to be. It's just a little dot in the sky now, because it is a red dwarf. So, if you want to, if you want to get a quick comparison of the sun compared to the, um, or the red dwarf sun compared to the old sun. Yeah, you see this thing is very, very small. Let's just call it, um, yeah, just call it red sun for now. Oops. Got to have a capital letter first. Oh, okay. Red sun. There we are. So there we go. Let's enter that in. All right. So we've got, now we've got our red dwarf sun. Now let's go to, um, just keep trails on. Okay. Oh, I don't want to go to this, um, rock here. All right. So let's go to earth. Wait, was that, oh, whose orbit is that? Oh, that's just the Earth's trail. Okay, so let's hit play. And now speed it up a bit more. And then you want to watch Earth's temperature right here. So as we can see, 30.6, 5, 4. So it is decreasing. So that's very cool or interesting. Wait, is its luminosity change? I think it has as well. Luminosity? Oh, yes, it definitely has. So it's only got 0.0201% of what the sun used to have. So, yeah, this thing is not very bright at all. So I'm assuming Earth will go into a global freeze. Basically, the Ice Age. So, yeah, that's not good. So we're going to have a new Ice Age on Earth. So let's see, look, the ice is spreading there. The snow and ice spreading. So all of Asia, almost, the Himalayas and all of this north part are all snow now. Poor old little um, UK here, England. That's all frozen up where I live. Africa or the equator area is still looking good. Antarctica is completely in darkness right now, so that's not too good. But that's normal, so it's only the north which is freezing up right now. But as we can see, all of these people here must be, yeah, not having a good time right now because it must be getting very, very cold since the surface temperature or the average temperature of Earth is only 8 degrees. So because that's an average, that probably means that a lot of this north area is going to be minus 10 maybe i don't know that's just an estimate yeah i'm pretty sure surface temperature this is a as an average not an actual surface temperature because of course it'll be different everywhere you go temperature but anyways let's speed this up a little more and as we can see the earth is now in negative degrees so the whole earth is now frozen because of this sun 
Now the sun is very dim. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, the earth has been ejected as well. What happened there? What just happened? Um. Okay, I didn't expect that. So, something happened there. Okay, very, okay, interesting. Okay, let's just load that up again. So, um. Okay, I want to know why that did that. So, let's pull up to, um. Yeah, 0 0.25 suns. Okay, so now it's back to it was and let's just um, decrease it a little more so it went to about 3,300 degrees so about there and now hits it play again so I want to know what happened there why did the sun just suddenly get ejected oh okay wait I realized what I did <laughs> I didn't make the planets orbit the sun I just let them um, fly away so yeah that's not good so it's 240 I think it was okay a little colder all right a little less I mean so let's cool this down again all right okay that's pretty much perfect now what we want to do is we want to select all of the objects we want to go in here and press auto orbit so now all of the objects are locked onto the sun again and just look how many there is here that's a lot of stuff all right so now we can hit play and now it should work so their orbits are changing but they should still be in orbit so let's okay yeah, there we go so now because the sun is so much less in in mass its mass has decreased so much it's now in a binary orbit with jupiter so yeah, because they are now of similar size and mass in in galactic terms, like it is a hundred times bigger, but it's still small enough to be in a binary orbit with Jupiter. So that's pretty interesting stuff there. But yeah, interesting. All right, so Earth is now minus two fifty six. Wait, is it? Wait, let's just put it to zero so it resets. Okay, let's see how cold Earth will get. Okay, so the inner solar system should stay um, the same, but the outer system is probably going to change a bit because of this new binary orbit here. So. That's going to be pretty interesting. Okay, so... In fact, let's actually go to Jupiter. Does Jupiter even receive sunlight? No, it doesn't. So, the whole outer solar system is now in complete darkness. So, that means all of the planets will probably go to minus 257, which is the absolute zero. The coldest thing possible. How about Ceres? Has Ceres got sunlight? Whoa, whoa, it's very, very dark here. Wow. This is probably what, like, Pluto is in, like, real life, honestly, how, how dark this is. So, if we turn off all the orbits, we can see at the sun... Is literally just another star in the sky like it's so small it just looks like any other star in the milky way so yeah that's not too good for our um, solar system here so it's um keeping out let's keep it on orbit mode okay so let's keep an eye on earth how cold is this gonna get so um let's speed up a little more okay so it looks like it's stuck at minus 148 now since we're traveling at three days a second and pretty much nothing hard uh, is changing so let's check up on venus where's venus at venus there you are all right Minus 106, even the hottest planet in the solar system is now very, very cold. Okay, how uh, Mercury, maybe? That's Mercury. Minus 161, so all planets are completely unhattable now, and Mars must be really, really cold. Minus 240, okay, that is freezing cold, wow. Yeah, you wouldn't survive long on there. Alright, so, yeah, the poor old little sun here is not producing enough energy to keep the planets warm, so every um, planet is frozen now, which isn't good. Alright, so let's keep an eye on the um, solar system, so let's... Oh, okay. Oh, if you look carefully, let's put it on flashlight mode. You can see that the asteroid belts have been completely um, messed up by this new um, binary orbit. So the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt have been completely uh, just disbanded. So they're all traveling into, into completely empty space now. So we can remove them because they pretty much just aren't part of the solar system anymore. So go back in this mode. And now stuff's speeding up a lot easier. So the sun is in a binary orbit with Jupiter. All of the other orbits are pretty much the same they're not really changing so how's all these guys doing okay um yeah all of these are pretty much in darkness like minus 257 on uranus uh, neptune minus 259 how's um planet 9 doing must be completely froze minus 268 wow that is crazy so i should get a view from planet 9 so this is the furthest object um from the um sun here so have a look and i literally can't even spot the sun um is it where is it? Labels? Where, where is the sun? Oh, it's there! Okay, look very carefully right where my mouse is. You can just about see it there. So, from Planet 9, it looks like Planet 9 is just in deep space. It doesn't even orbit anything. But, in reality, it actually is. But the star is so small and so dim, it's not even visible. So, yeah, pretty interesting stuff there if the sun was a red dwarf. What about Pluto? Let's check it out from Pluto. Any larger in the sky? Because the sun's already very small from Pluto, but... As a red dwarf, it's even smaller. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Okay. Wait, I forgot to call it red sun. 
exactly that. Alright, there we go. That's better. So, yeah, poor old Pluto's in complete darkness as well. So, um, the brightest thing in the sky at Pluto is now the Milky Way, pretty much. Alright, interesting. So, let's go back into here. So, we can see it since um, the um, sun became a red dwarf, all of the um, orbits are now getting pulled along by this Jupiter um, binary orbit here. So, yeah, the inner solar system is completely fine. Um, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, they'll say all the orbits are staying the same, honestly. It's just this binary orbit isn't really causing too much commotion. Like, all of the objects are still in orbit. They're not, like, getting broken away or anything. So, if we speed this up even more, it's just going to stay like that forever. So, I think that's going to take us to the end of this video, honestly. So, if you want a final little checkup on um, the planets here. So, Mercury, minus 161 degrees. Venus is minus 106. So, still the hottest planet, but still very cold Venus or earth minus 206 so that's completely unhattable everyone would have died by now no way anyone would survive that so series 251 vesta 231 if you want to have a look right jupiter's minus 247 uh where's get out saturn saturn is minus 253 uranus 258 neptune is 261 and planet 9 is 267 and if you want to get pluto as well uh, 257 as well, Iris, 264, and we'll end off with Sedna, 268. So the coldest ones are Sedna and Planet 9, obviously, because they are the furthest away, and they never really receive light from the Yellow Dwarf Sun in the first place. So, yeah, that's not too good. So, yeah, pretty pretty interesting stuff. But, yeah, that's going to do it for this video, because, as you can see here, thousands of years are going past now, and nothing's happening. So, yeah, we're done. We're, we're good. So, honestly, so to conclude... A red dwarf sun would, would, wouldn't change the solar system too much. All the orbits would stay the same, and you would get a binary orbit with Jupiter, but everything else is pretty much fine. Um, the planets are staying in the same places. It's just their temperatures cooled down. So, yeah, that's that. So, hopefully you guys all enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Leave a like, all that good stuff. So, and help us on our journey to 500 subs, because, yeah, we are rocketing our way there. So, hopefully we'll... Actually, I was going to say something silly, but I, don't know, I just forgot it. Oh, yeah, we can rocket our way into the universe or something. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, so let's um, yeah, speed this up just a little more to um, end off. So, yeah, like I said, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. And also, guys, hopefully you all have a good day. And, yeah, that's that. So um, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.